All right. So this is my next installment of the fourfold vision. Uh, I've learned something about the tetrahedrons um, that I want to share with you. The basic idea of fourfold vision is that there are these four aspects that we all have. You can think of it in terms of intuition, thinking, feeling, and action. Or you can think of it in terms of truth, wisdom, love, and virtue, and how they flow together. How do they interact with one another? Um, I've been working on this theme for a long time, and I've always used two-dimensional diagrams. And the big step that I had is that when I moved through three-dimensional. So I started by using these, these tetrahedrons. So today I want to take you through the tetrahedrons a little bit. So first thing, I think moving to four, this full three dimensions has been amazing for me because the integration is almost impossible to miss. That the, it's you think of it as one thing. So there are these four different faces, but it's one thing. These are four different perspectives, but they are four different perspectives on the same thing. So this is like the idea of Trinity being used to understand the unity of it. So here in this case, it's, you know, the, the fourth part of Trinity is you acting virtuously according to the wisdom to move towards the truth inspired by love. So what I want to say here about fourfold vision is I've understood, I realized something about the tetrahedrons. You know, Srupi talked about this one. There are three ways of looking at tetrahedrons. First is you can look at tetrahedrons, which focuses on the vertices. So you can say, these are the four things. I have my intuition, I have my thinking, I have my feeling, and I have my actions. How do they interact with one another? So the, you're focusing, when you take this view, on the vertices, on all these four vertex. Okay. There is a second way of looking at it, where you look at tetrahedrons like this, where you focus on the connections between the two. So there are six such connections. So you can say, how does intuition interact with thinking? How does thinking interact with action? How does action interact with feeling? How does feeling interact with intuition? How does thinking interact with feeling? And how does, uh, I think, uh, uh, intuition interact with your action? So there you're focused on these connections. But there is a third way of looking at the tetrahedron where you focus on the faces. You see, this, when you're using this kind of a tetrahedron, naturally your mind focuses on these faces. If you use this kind of a tetrahedron, it naturally focuses on these links. And if you use this kind of a tetrahedron, you naturally focus on the vertices. Now, everything I, I'm talking about tetrahedrons really isn't about the geometry of it. It is, these are being used as metaphors for understanding how to think using this fourfold vision, how, how you keep all of these things integrated in your operation. How, how do you integrate emotions, thinking, intuition, and your actions? Um, how do you connect up, you know, in case of Bhagavad Gita, Bhakti, Nyan, karma, and dhyan, and how do they interact with one another? So sometimes this is very useful, sometimes this is very useful, and sometimes this is very useful. But again, the beauty of it is that they are all about the one thing. And these are different ways of processing the one thing. Okay. So that's what I wanted to say that there are three ways of looking at tetrahedrons. Okay, now comes the second step. Okay, what I found was, now I've been looking at 
the octahedron. An octahedron actually gives you some advantages over tetrahedron. So I want to talk about that. And again, octahedron, you can look at it firstly, just like tetrahedron in three different ways. This is octahedron. You can see there are these four in this plane and there is one at the top and one at the bottom, right? So here, it's a way of looking at oct octahedron, which focuses on the vertex. You can also think of it this way, okay? Where you're focusing on the connections between these, okay? Or you can think of it this way, where you're focusing on the surfaces. Now, how does how do you think of fourfold vision in terms of octahedron? It's very simple. So what you do is that you see this flat square that you see right here. Okay, let me see if I, let me point it out correctly here, like this. This is a square. And you can look at these four things, truth, wisdom, um, love, and virtue at, as being at the corners here, okay? You're looking at it as a square right now, okay? So it maps very easily into two-dimensional paper. I'm very big on paper, I'm very big on drawing. So I find that this model maps really beautifully. One thing that I don't like about this tetrahedron is that you can't see all four sides at once. You can with this kind of a tetrahedron, but this is much more easier. I find that thinking of the four things because we are trying to think of all four things together. Okay, let me, okay, like this. So you can think of it, now, these four things, okay, forget about, now just look at this particular square. Okay, these four things. So this would be intuition, um, you know, intuition, uh, thinking, feeling, and action, okay? You can rotate around these four things in the order, um, I prefer the option of going from like love to intuition, to so love, to truth, to wisdom, to virtue. That is my favorite order, that, that order. And that actually maps into John Boyd's Uda, Uda loop. So it's like observe, see is the same as, as love, okay? Orient is the same as intuition of saying, what is the truth? What is the truth? You're trying to get to the truth. Decision of what you should be doing, the planning, that is wisdom that is going to guide your actions. And then act is the virtue. So you're going round and round on, on this one, okay? So this is how you can use it in two dimensions. But then what are these when you turn this around like this? This, you can think of it as a positive, and this is a negative. This is when all these things are coming together. So when you are trying to integrate them, trying to relate them, in Uda loop terms, when you're making those loops quicker and quicker, when you cycle through all these things quickly so that they seem like one, becoming one, this is the direction you're going. And this is the direction of the negative, the depth, where you dissociate from love, say no to it. So you can look at this one, you know, going down on the, the love axis would be fear, you know, with fear, you're going away from things. In terms of the intuition, you're going towards falsehood instead of truth. Instead of wisdom, you're, the best word I have is irresponsibility, that you're not really trying to guide your actions. And then you can look at the, the negative of virtue as vice or sin, whatever you want to do. So what this does is that this allows you to go around things and it allows the, the positive and the negative. So you can say, okay, which direction? What am I doing? How quickly am I going across this? Am I being integrated? Am I going up? This also becomes center and periphery right here, you see? This is the center when you are talking about, and you can open this thing up 
and you can look at the, the negative. So this is the positive side and this is the negative side. When you map it like this, this becomes the center. So you can express the center and this. And then when you open up these octagon like this, this would be the periphery when you're going and getting attached to specific things. This focusing on the center is the same as bringing things together. So you can map this into two dimensional thing as center and periphery, where this one, you know, in Jung's terms will be the abraxas where the, you know, it's at the border, which is where you're making a choice between love and fear, between truth and falsehood um, and choosing to go towards the center. So, so I, I, you know, as you can tell, I, I prefer this model where it is focused on the connections. Um, I, I find that most useful, but you can use this one. This is the same, same thing where you're saying that these four things here, again, pointing out here, these four are the four, four faculties that you have or four virtues, if you will. Um, and then this is the positive and the negative. You can also look at it this way. You can look at where you are. These are, this is going up using your, one is going up using your emotions. One is going down using your emotions. One is going up using your actions. One is going down using your actions. Going up using your thinking towards more and more wisdom or going down. Being open to truth, always seeking it, no matter what the consequences, or going towards falsehood because it is comfortable. So it's very easy for me to think, I, it is easier for me to think of the fourfold vision using an octagon rather than a tetrahedron. So that's what I wanted to say. Would love any comments. Go ahead and type exclamation mark if you'd like to comment. Uh, you can also ask questions if you want. Joe, what do you think? No, I think what you just demonstrated is the beauty of, uh, of geometry of thought in general, is that if you, by using the structure, by using the octahedron, uh, you start to be able to apply concepts very, very quickly and make the connections between them. Um, whether it be OODA loop, center, periphery, um, and this is where we can kind of like where you start to see the the power of, of the tetrahedron and then what it encompasses the connections, the edges or what or fingers, as, if you will. Um, uh, and then you start to think about those very systematically Then what. It, still not sure what, what the faces would actually encompass. Uh, I'm not sure yeah, if you, if, and maybe if you could expand. All right, that. sure. So, I mean, in case of tetrahedron, it is very, uh, in case of octahedron, it is very simple. They are arrows going up using this entire, you know, using this and these two things going up. So it's like two things and the consequence of it going up. But uh, the thing is that I don't really use, you know, that's not my preferred way of thinking. I always think in terms of, I think the more fundamental thing is this to start with, because okay. it's just focused on what is, like you have these four faculties, you know, you have, uh, if you want, you know, you have like Bhakti Yoga, you've got Karma Yoga, or you've got God the Father, you know, uh, God the Son, you've got the Helper, and it is you. So those are the four things that you're looking at. And then you're saying, are they going up or are they going down? That is what you do here. Here, the beauty of this, I, I really like this. I, this is what I end up using because what, what it does is that it is showing you the relationship. You say, what is the relationship between truth and wisdom? So you're going like this. What, is, what happens when you're trying to use your emotions in a positive way? So emotion is right here. Are you going in a positive way? Are you going up or are you going to be full of fear? So are you going to love? In which case you're going to bring everything together. Think of like a loop up here. Right. 
closer to the center or you're going down. Uh, and this one, you know, it, to, to make it 2D, I would pull it out and I would, you know, say you're going away from it. So to look at each of these things and you, you can look at the like relationships between them. Um, I find looking at relationships is going one step further than just looking at these individual things. So just like, for example, you say, you know, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Because there is word and God, there is something between them. So in that one, one, that one sentence, you got one. So you got truth, wisdom, and the connection between them. So, so I, I really like this version of it where the focus is on this. And again, this is not really about geometry. This is geometry being used as a metaphor right. for seeing the connections between and integrations between different aspects of our being. So that's that's what is being done here. Wonderful, it, thank you. Go ahead. In, in a way, you're actually thinking of things as far as not just 362, you're thinking of things in terms of 720. Right, uh, that's the that's one of the things Buck and Mr. Phil to talk about as well. Um, uh, also, instead of up and down, would you use in and or out? If you want, um, you can use that because all of these, the thing is that all of these are transformations. So, for example, you see, if you put it like this, right, and this is in, right, you just open this up and that becomes out. So, up and down becomes in and out. Okay. And all the right. beautiful thing about all of these are transformations. So in a sense, this can be transformed into this. Right. It's just the right. movements are different. I'm doing the same thing here, and I'm doing the same thing here. In some ways, doing this, I find it easy. Doesn't mean everybody is going to find it easy. You can do the same thing here. I used to, I used to do that till yesterday or day before yesterday. And that, until I, I find that this one allows me to make the distinctions better. I also really love the fact that I can map this very easily into two dimensions and do things with it uh, and go back and forth between 2D and 3D because then I can use my favorite tool of paper. Um, I don't have to carry all of it. I do have, you know, I do have these large dice. Let me show you here. This is the, the D8 dice which I can carry with me. I have like a tiny version of it too. So I can, I can carry this. So I don't have to carry this around all the time. Uh, and I can still think about things, uh, but I can also use paper um, and I can map because then soon what happens, it's all about what is easier to think about. You know, what is the, e because ultimately as Buck, you know, Buckminster Fuller points out, all philosophy has to be made into a very simple algorithm that you should be able to just run through. That is the that is the goal. I mean, like all of the training in the Indian tradition is all about internalizing it. And so the same is true with, with the Gospel of John. The same is true with Wu Wei. Wu Wei is having Tao expressed through your action. And all of these things are a way of trying to cycle through these things fast so you can you can learn more. Um, all right. Anybody else? Any any thoughts? Any comments? Let's see. Uh, Gary, do you want to say anything? Or Evanik, do you want to say anything? Evanik, go ahead. I just had a thought, and <clears throat> I don't know how this would happen, but I was thinking of maybe if there was a lesson on how to use the tetrahedron or something like it to think through different problems or different thoughts about different problems. And that doesn't make any sense, but I, the, the way I'm thinking of it is it's more practical. Like you were, you were doing it a little bit tonight, Shrikan, when you were thinking about different relationships in the tetrahedron. But I think it would be cool to show people how to walk through 
those practical issues or problems that they may be having. They don't have to share it on here, but if you show them and then have them walk through it, something, but I don't know how that will work. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's absolutely, I mean, the thing is that the form in which I've done this is to kind of look at kind of multiple tetrahedrons of saying, you know, people who are kind of more focused, let, let's, let, let, let's talk about a couple of things, okay? So for example, let's look at CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, right? So what, what it is saying is that the wisdom, like cognition, wisdom, which is based on truth. So this is the truth. This is the wisdom. It is saying next, you go through action. Okay, so you go truth inspired cognition, which is wisdom, which is then you take action. And then that is going to produce the right emotion. So you have to actually walk. You have to walk based on your understanding you have to walk you have to do do take action and that is going to really allow you to generate that emotion of love in you um so so it is going in that order so it is like n t s f something like that um you can also look at what happens when uh, you know, I used to do that with tetrahedrons. Uh, like I would take this and say, if a person is approaching the world in a action-oriented way, practical way, how will they interact with another person who is more feeling, uh, thinking-oriented or more feeling-oriented? If you want to take extreme versions of it, how is how is somebody who is very intuitive interact with people who who is very practical? Um, you know, and you can look at the combinations of them. How, how do you, how does a person who is kind of more feeling oriented act with somebody who is more thinking oriented? Uh, typically, there is like two parts, like the people who are kind of focused on thinking and then they like to apply it to their action. That's how their modus operandi is. So it's like these two things, one, two, like that. And how does how do they interact with somebody who is more kind of action oriented but guided by feelings so you could go through all of these things and you can actually talk to people i've done some meetups on like different interactions between people like that that would be one of of looking at it that level but you can also look at say um i mean i think of this all the time of saying what is going on here? This person I'm talking to, how are they approaching the world? And what you usually find, I'm not very good at it, okay? I'm very, very, in trying to figure out where the person is coming from, it takes a lot and I'm, I'm able to do only a little bit of it. But what you're trying to do is saying, okay, where are they coming from? And where am I coming from? And see the difference between that because many times problems are created because there is a lot of crosstalk going on because people just assume that other person is operating exactly the way they do. So that is the way in which I've used used uh, you know used it. But I definitely want to do more on that. I mean, I'm not. I'm just at the beginning stages. I'm just trying to develop these tools. I need to get um, proficiency. In using it, I need to be able to use it much faster than what I'm using right now, doing right now.